What's going on, y'all? It's Philly Celeb, and you tapped into Popcorn Matinee, Popcorn Conversations, exclusively on Philly Celeb Studios. Make sure you hit the like, the subscribe, the follow. Today's special guest is Chris Goodenough. Now, let me tell you a little bit about Chris. He's a military veteran, so off the rip, got to support my guy. He's automatically family. Um, Chris is doing something real interesting. Besides being a real dope, great writer, he's also releasing a short film every month. Talk about dedication, consistency. So if you need some inspiration, you need some motivation, or you just want some knowledge on the film business, definitely tap into this interview. You wanna roll, you wanna ride. We get money, you know the vibe. We stand on them, that ain't no lie. We get our blessings from out the sky. I appreciate you coming on. First and first and foremost, I wanna say uh thank you for your service. Uh where did you serve it? Like where what uh, branch of the military were you in? I served in the Coast Guard. I was a uh, military, basically a medic. Same thing as a medic in the Army, uh, but I worked with the Coast Guard. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your service, man. Oh, sure. I was also in the uh, military. I was in the uh, National Guard. Okay. Yeah, I was like, well, thank you for your service. Oh, no. Sure. Thank you. I appreciate you. That's kind. That's kind of you. All right, so uh, first of all, what what got you into like making films in the first place? What what made you pick up that camera or get into filmmaking? Write your stories. Well, you know, I've always been a writer. I, I've been a writer since I was a little child, um, and uh, just from doing that, I had actually run into a friend of mine who was an actor, and I kind of sort of became his acting coach. And he had just finished doing a stage play. And, uh, you know, as a lot of performers do, he was going through post-performance depression. And uh, he says, you know, you know, I asked him, I said, well, what do you want to do now? And he said, well, why don't we do a TV episode that you wrote? And I was like, all right, that sounds good. How do we do that? And just from a, a, a whole lo- roll of different actions i ended up becoming a director and then a producer um but it all started with just becoming a acting coach for a friend okay that's interesting now what's the what's the post actors depression what is that i never heard of that term i like that though well well you know i've seen it with a lot of actors now that i've been in doing this for a while is once they're done with a show especially stage performers they kind of go into this depression of not knowing what to do with all their time now because you know they were doing nightly shows and they were rehearsing and for months and months they've been involved heavily into the stage performance and now it's all gone so they go through this bit of melancholy depression that's it. That's interesting. That's that's crazy. But you was there to help him get out of it, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, that's what friends do, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, how how old? Like, how long have you been writing, actually? Well, you know, I, I started way back when I was a little kid. I I always had a vivid imagination. If you don't believe me, ask my mother. <laughs> uh, but uh, we had gone to a yard sale and. You know, all the other kids at the yard sale were scrambling to get the toys and all that. And my focus, I went straight for a real old royal black um, typewriter. And my mom was like, you really want that? And I said, yeah, I do. And as soon as I got home, I took a uh, took my notebook apart from school and threw a piece of paper in there and I started writing. And I haven't stopped since. Okay. So who are, are some of your inspirations for writing? Well, you, you know, there, it, it's going to sound cliche, but Aaron Sorkin is amazing. You know, I, whenever I do my dialogue, I always, you know, what would Aaron Sorkin say in this uh, situation? Okay. You know, so, so he's one of them. I love Shonda Rhimes. Uh, I think her writing is fantastic. And of course, you know, for me, Taylor Sheridan is the man. He... he if you ever want a role model for the business, not just the writing, but for the entire business, he's the guy that you want to follow because he just, he, he does everything and he does it well. Okay. 
That's inter- that's a that's a great list. I like that. So what is what is your uh, writing routine like? Uh, typically, I write in the morning. I get up about four o'clock in the morning. My mom said I should have been a farmer. <laughs> uh, you know, I get up and I go down with the sun. So I, I get up in the morning, and you know, make a cup of coffee and kind of start my writing. I normally go back a page or two mm-hmm. on whatever I'm working on and just kind of get back into the flow mentally. And then I start writing, and I write for two to three hours every morning. Okay. You use Final yeah. Draft, right? I use Final Draft, yeah. You know, I used uh, Microsoft Word originally for the screenplays, and I got told a lot, a lot of times that, you know, it's not industry standard. You know, the screenplays that you're putting out aren't industry standard. Nobody's going to read them. So, you know, after humming and Han, I decided I was going to go with Final Draft Pro. And, you know, it's done me well ever since. Okay. So where where do you get, like, your inspiration from for your stories? Like, like the shadow and the light. I noticed that. I like the little twist that's on there. Like, where do you get well, your inspiration? Thank you. Well, you know, for me, first off, there is no new story. Every story has been told. It's just telling a story differently that you do. Okay. But um, for me inspiration can come from anywhere uh you know just someone will say a couple words together and it's like oh that's a great title for a movie i should write that and you know or you know you'll get a line of dialogue or a situation that you wish you didn't have to deal with or that you know is giving somebody else angst you know so i i I get a lot of it just from talking with other people okay so what what would be like your uh, favorite genre to write? Uh, God, you know, I I, I love post apocalyptic style mm-hmm. movies. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got two or three of fe- full length features written of them. But you know, the, the difficulty you run into, especially at my stage in the business, is you got to write to budget because you know if you want to get something produced, it's got to be on the lower end of the budget spectrum, you know, when, when you're starting out. But, uh, you know, I, I love the post-apocalyptic stuff. The only problem is, you know, they, they all turn out to be, you know, blockbuster, $100, $200 million movies that I'm st- trying to write. Okay. You thought about writing them as, like, books first? Uh, no, you know, I, I started with short stories, but I really feel like my... Uh, Nietzsche is in writing screenplays, either shorts or features. Okay. I like I like that. I like that. So you're doing a real interesting thing. I thought about doing this too, but you really you actually doing it. You're doing one one short film a month. Like what made yeah. you want to do that? Well, you you know for for me again following in Taylor Sheridan's uh, role. Uh, or his, his themes, he writes movies and he brings actors on board, and then he'll write another episode or another series, and some of those actors will go along with him, and then he'll write another series, and even more actors will go along with him. So for me, writing the short a month, it's about developing a uh, network of actors and uh, crew that you know we can call on any time. So when we do start rolling into those features. Now I've got a cast and crew that I can, uh, or a cast and crew pool that I can select from. And, you know, we've worked with each other in the past. We're well acquainted with each other. The the shorts are more of an exercise for me. It's not necessarily um, trying to tell a complete story. It's an exercise for me in writing and directing. It's an exercise for the actors, for the, working on their skills. You know, the lighting guys, the uh, sound guys. It's all about getting them used to our entire system. Okay. okay. So do you, so where do you get your, your team from? Do you put out an ad or like how do you, how do you, and do you work with different people each time that you shoot, or, shoot a short film? Um. Actually, no. I, I I do bring along a lot of actors that you'll see in repeat role or not repeat roles, but uh, they will be in other features or other films that we do. Um, 
only because they, you know, they, they understand the process and they're willing to put in the work. Um, yeah. As far as like, as far as like behind the scenes, like like your lighting and your uh, cinematographers and all, where do you get those from? Those, you know, it's funny when we started doing this. Um, it was just a small little group of us, and as we've been producing more and getting our name out there a little bit more, other people have actually come to me saying, "Hey, I'd love to be on set with you." You know, even if it's as a PA. You know, just I, I want to see how you go through the process. And, you know, they'll come on board as a PA and, you know, the next film they'll move up to uh, being a, an assistant to the sound guy or first AC or, you know, they'll work their way through the different uh, job descriptions and see which one fits them best. Okay. Do you keep, now, do you keep the same, or let's say like the light, I know you say they, they work, they worry up, but do you keep the same people behind the scenes, or do you switch, try out different people? Uh, well, <laughs> as far as lights and sound, I'm kind of particular as to who I want running my lighting and my sound, mm -hmm. only because, you know, you, you know, being in the business, if the sound ain't good, nobody's going to watch your movie. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, once I find a good sound guy, I kind of latch on to him and bring him along with everything that we do. And the same thing with lighting. You know, you tell the story with painting with lights. So if I find somebody that's good with lighting, I'm going to hold on to him. Okay. So when filming your shorts, like, how long does it usually take? Like, how many shooting days? Uh, well, we, we when, when I write, I write, try to keep it... Uh, as few a number of sets and a few actors as possible to still tell a decent story. So typically we're writing anywhere from six to 12 pages worth of script and we're filming it in about four to six hours in one day shoot. Okay. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. Well, I think part of that too is, you know, everybody is um, comfortable with what we're doing behind the scenes so they know where to be and when to be and what to do. Okay. What's, what's like the wildest thing that happened on set with you filming the shorts? Uh, uh, um, well, probably the weather's the worst thing. You know, we've, we've been on uh, shoots late at night where it's been really, really cold. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we've been shooting in February, uh, in a open air, uh, parking lot, you know, where the wind is whipping and the snow's coming down. So it's typically the weather is the worst thing for us. Okay. 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 So, um, no difficult actors or no difficult, uh, like a cinematographer, like, do you ever clash with cinematographers? Nope. 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 No. We always, I can honestly say that I don't think I've ever been on a set, um, either my own company or anybody else's company, at least in Eastern Connecticut, where there's been any kind of problems with any of the personnel. What's good, my creators? I know you're enjoying the conversation. I'm going to keep bringing you content from filmmakers, not just in America, like all over the world. Shit, if I can find a filmmaker in Mars or on the moon, I will. But right now, I need your help. I need you to hit the like button. I need you to share this episode on your, on your social medias, whether your Instagram or any of that. I need you to share, like, subscribe, follow. Now, yep. now can you tell us about... Uh, the Shadow and the Light, like, what inspired you to write that movie in particular? Well, the Shadows and the Light was kind of my riff on A Beautiful Mind. Um, you know, it's about a paranoid schizophrenic who doesn't like the way the medications make him feel, so he stops taking them. And every time he does, his imaginary friend comes back, and his imaginary friend's never nice to him. That's, yeah, that's, okay, okay. Yeah. I like it because the antagonist isn't um, necessarily the f bad friend. The antagonist is really the paranoid schizophrenia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Uh, that's when I, I was shocked when I seen that part when she was like, how come I could see him? I mean, how come you could see him, but I can't? And then he's, right. he's like, tell him something. He's like, I don't like the way the medic. Yep. Yeah, I like, yeah.
You know, if you watch it again at the very beginning, when the wife goes into the kitchen, all you can hear is uh, the main character's voice in the background. You can't hear the imaginary friend. Mm, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to do now. That's that's great. That's that's something I can give you too. That's great, right? And I like that. Like when you can go back and watch it again and see stuff that you missed. You, yeah, I like that. So now I know that you're doing like a lot of mental health uh, like type films. Like that's what I'm saying. Like what's what's inspired? What's the inspiration behind it? I like that. I like well, that you have a message with your stuff. Well, I, I think at times you write what you know. Okay. Okay. You know, you understand PTSD that, you know, it's, it's easy to write about PTSD when you know what people are going through. Yeah. Now, are any of your shorts connected or in the uh, same universe? No, uh, we did write one back a couple of years ago called The, the Last American Vampire. Um, that one's not on my page and I really need to get it there. But um, we are thinking of writing the first American Vampire, which would be the prequel. Okay. Okay, that's... It. Okay. Um, now, you were telling me about the Evans, uh, the story, and the story about the Sage Brothers. That's the same thing, or that's two separate things, real quick? That's a huge project. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, a friend of mine is a survivor of the uh, Evans crash that happened in 1969. Hmm. A aircraft carrier an australian aircraft carrier while they were on maneuvers basically sliced the uh frankie evans in half mm. and 74 sailors went down with the ship in a matter of a few minutes that's mm. so yeah that, now, that was during the vietnam war and the guys that went down their names never got on the vietnam wall because the Navy didn't want to admit that it was their fault. That's crazy. That's wild. Yeah. yeah, so we want to get this movie out there, especially just to get these guys the uh, honors they deserve of having their names on the Vietnam Memorial Wall. Yeah, that, they definitely need that. And I definitely hit up the news about that, too, when you do put it out. What's, what's your timeline, like, for filming it and putting it out? Well, first, like I said... You got to raise know, the funds, yeah. It, comes down to budget yeah you know unfortunately like i said earlier when i write movies i don't necessarily write to budget so you know you're talking about explosions you're talking about cgi you're talking about all kinds of technical things that are going to drive the budget way up mm -hmm. so what we really need to do is we need to get somebody like clint eastwood or gary sinisi or you know somebody that's heavily involved tom Selleck. Tom Selleck is, uh, sits on the board for the Vietnam Memorial Wall. We'd okay. love to get script in somebody's hand like that so that they could uh, see about helping us get it produced. No, for sure, definitely. And don't be afraid to use those, those military muscles, those military benefits. Flex those muscles, too, that you're a veteran. And all. Oh, definitely. absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. I can see that. That's Yeah, that would be epic. The Evans, that's, that's, that's epic now. Oh yeah, yeah, that's epic. I definitely that's something I would, would definitely like to see come to life. Yeah. The screenplay's right now is 127 pages. Mm. So did you uh, do you have it like out for people could read it or are you shipping it around now? Well, I just finished the second revision and I gave it to my friend who's one of the survivors. Every year they have a reunion of the survivors. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to bring that one with him to the reunion and he's going to kind of get it in the right hands. Okay. Now, speaking of that, do you have like representations for your shorts or different uh, ventures that you're doing? Uh, no, I don't. And, and, and again, I'm sure you're very well familiar with this. There, there's a catch-22 in the industry. You know, to get something in the hands of a producer, you need an agent. But to get something in the hands of an agent, you need a producer. That's, yeah. That's, yes. That's wild. But I also heard that, like, this is the only industry, too, like, where you can get an actor to agree to it without going through, like, all the channels. Like, if you submit your script to a certain actor, they have to accept it or decline it. Right, exactly. And I, and I hear some actors, if you can get an actor to agree to be in it, then you could take that and, you know, 
shop that around that way. Oh, yeah. Locking in somebody like Clint Eastwood or Tom Selleck or Gary Sinise, that that would be huge. And, you know, I, I'm sure that it would at least see the light of day. It might get greenlit. That's that's the best hope. Yeah. No, I wish you luck, man. I wish you, I'm wish i rooting for you and you always got an outlet through me and through my platform. I definitely will support you because I appreciate you coming on and you also a veteran, a fellow veteran like myself. So you my my platform is your platform so you definitely have an open outlet and uh well, i appreciate that and you're always welcome on my set anytime i appreciate you man thank you i appreciate that now what's what's next month's movie that's coming out uh we are doing another short this one is about a uh soldier returning from iraq with ptsd that has been awarded the uh purple heart Okay. And it's about him kind of expressing his feelings about what's he, what he's going through. Okay, okay. I'm definitely tapping into that because I came. That's that's kind of like my story. I went to Iraq and everything. I came back with PTSD, so I definitely want to tap in, and, and and I'm definitely supporting that one. Definitely yeah, see, supporting. Yeah, different mothers, you and I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are some advice that you have for any aspiring? writers inspiring filmmakers well up and coming i don't want to call people aspiring because as soon as you do it you you win it what what advice do you have for those well i i would say don't stop you know there's a difference between dreams and goals goals you take a step towards you know it, if it's just a dream of yours that you want to do that that's great but if it's a goal you're going to take a step towards it every day, whether it's a baby step, whether it's a giant step, whether it's a bunch of steps. You know, don't stop. Uh, you know, picture a flag out in the middle of a field. Mm -hmm. If you're standing on the edge of that field and you want to get to that flag, the only way you're going to get there is if you take those steps to get there. So, you know, whether you want to be a writer, whether you want to be a producer, director, it doesn't matter. You know, if you want to be an actor, don't stop. Get your name out there. Get in front of people. Plug in your social medias if you have a website. And you can shout out everybody, you know, your cast, your crew. Well, geez, there's, there's so many great actors that we have working with us. Ryan Jennings, uh, Shane Richards. Shane Richards just did the piece um, about the autistic child, uh, Natural Talent. He did a monologue in there that just blew us all away. Um, Shane Richards is great. Uh, we've got Joshua Kalinowski. He's in about everything that we do. Um, who else is, uh, you know, then I've got great crew. Dave Tor is my sound guy. He's been with me since the beginning and he just rocks the sound for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've got my son acting as a PA, Josh, and, uh, you know, he's always there every day running slate, you know, moving lights doing everything that a PA should do. So just a great cast and crew all around. 